Hello and welcome to Teaching Bio. Today we're going to look at a paper three style application slash data analysis question that I've made. So this um, involves a real practical and I've looked at questions relating to um, the kidneys and also circulatory system. So let's try and answer this question. So the question says that salt is a compound composed of sodium and chloride ions, okay? So salt composed of those ions. A salty diet leads to different problems in the body relating to the blood, heart, kidneys and brain. So as I read this question, I'd and if something like this comes up in the exam, obviously not this context, but you need to go through and underline the key parts of it, okay? So salt and problems are to them. So in my mind, you'd be thinking, well, what type of problems might salt cause to the blood, heart, kidneys and brain? Having a salty diet leads to the production of less urine. Use your knowledge of the kidneys to suggest how a salty diet leads to the product how a salty diet leads, so I should say, to the production of less urine. Okay. So if we think about this question and we think about um, the loop of Henley, we can try and work this out. So this is the ascending limb and this is the descending limb of the loop of Henley. And at the ascending limb, we have the sodium chloride pump, okay? Oh, and this pumps out sodium ions from the ascending limb and also chloride ions, okay? So sodium ions get pumped out and also chloride ions get pumped out. And these are pumped out by active transport using ATP, okay? Because it's going from a low concentration to a high concentration. As a result, the concentration of sodium and chloride ions increases here so that they can move into the descending limb. Okay, so this is the countercurrent principle because in here they start to move back out. As a result of sodium and chloride ions moving out of the pump, this will lower the water potential here. Okay, and the area surrounding the limb is known as the medulla. As a result of the decrease in water potential, water here will move out by osmosis. Um, into capillaries that, sur that surround the nephrons um, and be reabsorbed, okay? So this is how water is reabsorbed from the loop of Henley. However, the question says that having a salty diet leads to the production of less urine. So let's think about that. If we have a salty diet, that implies that we have more sodium and chloride ions entering the descending limb, okay? So compared to before, we now have even more sodium and chloride ions inside there. Okay, so the concentration is going to use the red color to represent them. The concentration of them starts to increase even more than before. So as a result, when we get to the ascending limb, even more sodium and chloride ion will get pumped out, okay, in this sort of cyclical process here. As a result, the water potential of the medulla will become even lower meaning that even more water will be reabsorbed from the loop of Henle, therefore producing less urine. Because the water potential okay, of the medulla is lowered even further than before. As a result, we can explain this at what happens at the collecting duct. So at the collecting duct, the water potential of the filtrate in the lumen of the collecting duct is higher than the water potential outside, okay? in the cells that line the collecting duct that are part of the medulla, okay? So this water potential is lower. And generally, um, water is reabsorbed by osmosis as water moves down its concentration gradient, okay, into the cells lining the collecting duct. And how much water is reabsorbed is controlled by ADH. Now, the question says that more salt means less urine. And we looked at here, um, because there's more salt, even more sodium and chloride ions are pumped out into the medulla. So as a result, the water potential gradient here increases because this water potential is even lower than before. So that means that a larger volume of water will leave, okay? So more water will be reabsorbed into the cells lying the collecting duct, and therefore very, very little water will be present in urine. Okay, Let's look at what the mark scheme says. Increase in salt concentration, increase in salt concentration of filtrate. Okay, so more salt in filtrate. Increases water potential gradient of collecting ducts. Larger volume of water reabsorbed, slash more water moves out by osmosis. This point here, and therefore less is excreted, less is in urine. So the next question says to just explain how a salty diet leads to high blood pressure. Okay, so salty diet also causes high blood pressure. 
well, we can now talk about this in terms of tissue fluid formation, as that is where we meet, you know, hydrostatic pressure and so on. Um, so if we look at um, the capillary here, this is the arterial and this is the venule end, and generally the contraction of the left ventricle produces a very, very high hydrostatic pressure at the arterial end. Okay, so generally there's a very, very high pressure here. Okay, so here I'm just going to put to denote pressure. There's a high pressure there, and as a result, that forces water out, okay? And that then bathes the cells and that forms the tissue fluid, okay? And any small um, molecules or proteins can move out. However, large proteins remain, and therefore the water potential here decreases. And because all this water has been forced out, the water potential here increases. And so water moves in by osmosis and is reabsorbed, okay? And this process lowers um, the hydrostatic pressure of blood, okay? Now, as a result of having a salty diet, this implies that we will have more sodium and chloride ions inside the blood plasma, okay? So compared to before, I'm just going to use sodium. We have even more sodium than what we would normally have, okay, inside the blood plasma. As a result, the water potential of the um, blood plasma is lowered even further, okay? The water potential falls even further. And as a result, even more water now moves in by osmosis to be reabsorbed, okay? But how does that mean that we have a higher blood pressure? Well, if we use logic with this, okay, so we've looked at these points, salt lowers water potential of blood, more water moves in by osmosis, increases water potential gradient, there is now a greater movement of fluid slash solutes, okay, in the tissue fluid. And as a result, that might cause blood vessels to constrict against the pressure of water. Or the high side pressure of the venule end is just simply not lowered. Or you can say that the pressure of water is greater than solute pressure. Or you could even mention how salt inhibits baroreceptor stimulation. So the final marking point requires a bit more lateral thinking. But if you think through the concepts, it makes more sense. More water will move in. So more of the solutes and so on that are in tissue fluid will constrict against the capillary wall. And that will increase blood pressure. And therefore, at the venule end, blood pressure is not lowered enough. Okay, so if we continue on with the questions, this now focuses on the a practical involved in salt and so on. So it's a scientist who looked at an experiment with rats to see how salt affects the brain, okay? Again, we were rats a very salty diet for two weeks. These were then compared to a control group of rats that were fed a normal balanced diet. Salt contains the ion sodium and chloride, okay? Thanks for telling us. The scientists made the following observations. They looked at the changes in the brain's cerebrospinal fluid and the sodium ion ratio. They looked at changes in the amount of protein folding in mRNA codons for ATP1A3. Now you're seeing all these words that you haven't learned before, okay? But it's just application, and they're going to tell you what each of these mean eventually. Changes in the production of action potentials in the brain, and changes in the production of a type of T helper cell called interleukin-17 at sites of infection. So they made these four observations. The CSF okay, is the cerebral spinal fluid, which is the name given to the fluid in the brain, okay, so you know what CSF is. So, the question then says that figure one shows one of the results for the change in brain CSF to sodium ion ratio, okay, so now we'll look at my axes. I've got brain CSF to sodium ion ratio, okay, and I've got A and B, and the question says to suggest which bar, A or B, represents the data for rats that were fed a very salty diet and use figure one to give a reason for your answer. So with this question, you basically need to interpret what the um, scale says, okay? So it's this idea of ratio. So because it's a ratio, it means that all of these values are in a ratio to one. So A has an approximate value of about 0.07, I'm just going to draw that to 8, so 0.08 to 1, and B has 0.07 to 1, okay? So A has more CSF, um, cerebral spinal fluid, compared to B, okay? Because it has more of the fluid compared to the sodium ions. So how are we going to work out which bar A or B represents the data that were for the rats of a salty diet, right? And the answer is A, okay? So if you think through this, if um, rats, so the rats were given a very salty diet, okay? And the ones that have more salt, more sodium chloride ions, mean that the water potential of the cerebral spinal fluid will be even lower than those that were not given 
the salty diet, okay? So A rats will have a lower water potential of the cerebrospinal fluid. And as a result, more water from brain cells or whatever moves into the fluid so more water moves in, so the ratio slash value of slash magnitude or concentration of water in the ratio increases, which is why A um, are the rats that were fed a salty diet, okay? This is difficult to kind of interpret because technically both have a, both have the same concentration of sodium, it's they're both in a ratio to one. So because of that, you need to look at how the salt, the sodium ions might affect the volume or concentration of water in okay, the cerebrospinal fluid. And therefore, the answer is A. Next question now talks about ATP 1 alpha 3. So ATP 1 alpha 3 is a specific mRNA sequence that produces a primary, um, I should not say primary spice, sorry, that produces a primary protein sequence. This then folds further to produce a specific unit, okay, of the sodium potassium ATP as a sodium potassium pump. So that makes a part of the pump. These pumps are found in the membrane of cells in the brain that are surrounded by the cerebrospinal fluid. Great. Ions are pumped from the cells into the cerebrospinal fluid. So, figure two shows changes in the brain, 81 alpha 3 primary protein sequence folding. Okay, so we've got salt, which has less folding. Okay, so the fold change is less. And the control group, which have more folding. Okay, so having a salty diet means that the brain ATP A13 of alpha 3 protein folding has decreased. So it's concluded that the change was as a result of the presence of salt. So that's an explanation for the results shown in figure two. Okay, so as a result of the salt, there will be more sodium ions, okay? So more sodium chloride ions. So how might that affect the mRNA codon's primary and which then becomes the primary protein, how it folds? Okay, well, this is just a simple question at, at the heart of it on just how um, distortions happen to protein structure. So less folding in salt group has more sodium slash chloride slash salt in cerebral spinal fluid. And the ions, sodium slash chloride ions, distort the ionic bonds or the interactions in the tertiary structure, okay? So it's in the tertiary structure where the other bonds are affected, okay? It's not in the secondary structure because that's only hydrogen bonds, okay? And sodium chloride ions do not affect the hydrogen bonds. So it's in the tertiary structure, it falls even further. So it says to ignore salt, it distorts the bonds, it's specific to ions, okay? So the sodium ion or the chloride ion or both of them. You can mention the other bonds, for example, disulfide, but again, reject hydrogen bonds because that's incorrect. 1.5, the scientists looked at the rate of firing of action potential between the synapses in the neuron. Use figure one and two to suggest and explain which group of rats would have a faster rate of firing, the control group or the salt group, okay? So this one's, um, slightly more interesting. So if we look back at figure one, um, we know that the salt rats, okay, A, have more cerebrospinal fluid to water than B, okay? And looking at this figure here, we know that the salt um, ones have less ATP 1 alpha 3 folding, therefore there is less sodium potassium pump, okay? So which ones have a faster rate of firing? So we can draw a picture to sort of help us with this. So if we look at um, the, so this one will be my um, salt group, and then in this color, I will do the control group, okay? So in the salt group, they have a larger volume, okay, of cerebrospinal fluid. And as a result, the sodium ions inside the fluid, Na+, plus, okay, I'm just going to do the rest of them as red, uh, let's do red dots, okay, as a result, they will be more dispersed because they're more diluted so they will be closer to the membranes of these cells and therefore move in with the cells and cause depolarization whereas in the control group they have a lower volume of csf therefore they will not be as dispersed so there will be less depolarization okay because they'll be more in the middle because they're not diluted enough salt group has more csf relative to sodium or salt group has a greater ratio to sodium, or they have a larger volume of CSF. So the cerebrospinal fluid space effectively is diluted, has spread, or has more volume, so more contact. So sodium ions have more contact too, so it's closer to the membrane, or so sodium ions have a short diffusion distance to the membrane compared to the other ones, okay? Because these guys are closer to the membrane compared to the other ones.
Okay, so the ratio is to one, so that means that the concentration sodium ions are the same, but it's because of there being more cerebrospinal fluid, that's why salt group will have more depolarization.